دكتور أنطون وشكرا لهذه المقدمة الجميلة وأحيي جميع الزميلات والزملاء الكرام في هذه الأمس الطيبة والتي نستهل فيها أولى نشاطنا بمحاضرة عن Contemporary Operative Carries Management Consensus Recommendations on Minimally Invasive Carries Removal وهذه إن شاء الله ستكون باكورة لمحاضرات علمية قادمة تقوم بها جمعية المعالجة التحفظية أنا أود أن أبدأ برسالة رئيسية أبعثها إلى الجميع وأقول My main message today is seal for prevention The most important thing is seal and when you seal, you prevent dental caries. I will go through this lecture in English and in Arabic, and I hope by the end of my lecture, this message will be clearer to you. Now, there is ongoing debate about dental caries, and this is being about the strategies for removing carious tissue, the growing number of studies and their synthesis into systematic reviews that question conventional carious tissue removal. And there is confusion around terms that refer to these strategies. الآن هذول الدبيت القائم أو المناقشة التي تقوم على هذه الأشياء التي ذكرتها وهي استراتيجيات إزالة تسوس الأسنان والمصطلحات العلمية المترافقة مع طب الأسنان نود إن شاء الله اليوم أن نعيرها بعض الانتباه ونبينها لكم ف... The focus is on carious teeth that could be retained and with pulps responding positively to sensitivity testing, sensible, sensible pulps. إذا أنا بدي أركز على السن اللي هو بكون vital okay, والذي أستطيع أن أحتفظ به في منظومة الأسنان داخل الفم. والتركيز الآخر يكون على الأسنان المتسوسة والتي فيها التهاب في العصب ولكنه reversible نستطيع تطبيبه وإعادته إلى حياته السليمة Let us see Now what is dental caries? Dental caries is the name of a disease resulting from an ecologic shift within the dental film. بصير في عندي تحول داخل الفم و بتحول from a balanced population of microorganisms. الميكروارجانيزمز داخل الفم بكون فيهن توازن لكن أحيانا يختل هذا التوازن وتصبح هذه الميكروارجانيزمز تتحول إلى أسيدوجينيك تفرز الأحماض وتتحول إلى عوامل مسوسة للأسنان and cariogenic microbiological population developed and maintained by frequent consumption of fermentable dietary carbohydrates إذا عندنا مشكلة إذا أنت ضليتك تأخذ frequently بانتظام وبكثرة هذه السكريات بالمحصلة ستكون النتيجة سيكون هناك imbalanced environment in the mouth والبكتيريا ستتحول إلى بكتيريا تفرز الأحماض وتحلل الملح من الأسنان Now بال tradition يعني classically what do we define dental caries كلنا عرفنا انه dental caries is a disease that is caused by interaction of several factors ولذلك احنا بنقول عنه كما انا هنا ببين بالازرق انه it's a multifactorial multifactorial okay وهذا واحد يعني الاسئله دائما متكرره في هذا المجال 
uh, what are the causes of dental caries. It is multifactorial. وكلنا بنعرف السلسلة هذه من الدوائر التي تقول أول دائرة عن الهوست والثانية الهوست اللي هو التوث يعني وبعدين عندنا الدايت بعدين عندنا مايكرو أورغانيزمز وبعدين عندنا تايم فوين ذا هوست اللي هو ذا توث and the diet and the microorganisms over time interact together they form dental caries لذلك يبين هذا السلايد بأن الكاريز هو مالتي فاكتوريال Now what other definitions I can give you today we have actually to differentiate between caries process and caries legion so what is the caries process It's the dynamic sequence of biofilm tooth interaction. The biofilm will interact with the tooth. Then that can occur over time on and within a tooth surface. هذا الinteraction ما بين البكتيريا وما بين السن سمينا the caries process. Now, what about the caries legion then? A caries or carious legion is a detectable change in the tooth structure. كيف أنا بميز إنه هون بالأسنان عندي صار initial carious legion, detectable change in tooth structure, or color. وهذا بعد شوي سنتطرق له. So it is the clinical manifestation sign of caries process. All right. إذا ينتج عن الكيرز بروسس كيرز ليجن إذا أصبحت الكيرز ليجن is a result of the كيرز بروسس ولذلك نقول بأن people have dental كيرز while teeth have كيرز ليجنز alright يعني ما بنقول الأسنان فيهن dental كيرز no they have كيرز ليجنز لكن زكريا عنده دنتال كيريز وسن زكريا عنده كيريز ليجن كيف يحصل كل هذا؟ انا ورجيتكم هون في عندي زي الميزان على اليمين في الكلاين وعلى الشمال في اسيد وهذا يعتمد على البي اتش هيلثي ماوث از نون اسيدك مش حامضي Neutral. قديش neutral يعني ال pH تبعه بكون 7 or above. الا إذا راح صار 7 بنسميه neutral. Above 7 بنقول عنه alkaline و lower than 7 بنقول عنه acidic. Now, when it goes towards the acidic environment, you expect there is going to be mineral dissolution. Now, if it goes towards the alkaline side, then there might be um, mineral remineralization of the tooth. Mineral will deposit on the tooth surface. Here is the pH chart. In the middle, in green, this is the 7, pH 7, which is the neutral. In, the, in bluish, it is the alkaline and in the Um, reddish it goes acidic danger okay danger more acidic more dissolution of mineral from the tooth now what causes all of this frequent consumption of sugar okay sugar sugar is very dangerous you should we should not take much of it especially when it is frequent all right Now, we have talked so far about the mouth. Now I want you to concentrate on what happens to the tooth. Now, what is the critical pH? Critical pH is the number of pH at which lower than the critical pH, okay, the tooth will start losing mineral. Above the critical pH, like in here, Okay, seven, eight, nine, it goes towards remineralization. So now as a dental practitioner, you must aim to advise your patient on a strategy to 
maintain his mouth with a pH above 5.5. It go, if it goes always frequently for a long time, lower than 5.5, you would expect the rate of dental caries to be very much. So teeth lose mineral when mouth chemistry becomes acidic, while teeth gain minerals when mouth chemistry is neutral or slightly alkaline. Now, here is uh, a curve that shows you the critical pH for hydroxyapatite and the critical pH of fluorodated hydroxyapatite. That is when the hydroxy has some element of fluoride in it. Now look how much benefit fluoride has given to your mineral in the teeth. It has lowered the critical pH from being 5.5 to 4.5, which means that in case of fluoridated hydroxyapatite, the pH needs to go down to pH 4.5 so that mineral will come out from the tooth surface. While in case of normal hydroxyapatite that is not being fluoridated, it is only pH 5.5. So when we get to 5.5, our tooth start bleeding mineral. When we get to 4.5, even the hydroxy fluoridated appetite will start bleeding mineral. Now, going up above 4.5, that is gaining mineral in the case of hydroxy fluoroapatite. When it is above, 5.5 as where my arrow is here, you see, it is going to remineralize, remineralize. So now talking about the caries will lead us to the aim of the management of dental caries. How do I then manage dental caries? All right. The aim of the management of dental caries is inactivate or control the disease, preserve dental hard tissues, avoid initiating the cycle of restoration, and preserve the tooth for as long as possible. Either NSR and the disease process, care is a process. What do I want? I want to inactivate it first, control it, and then preserve dental heart tissues, and then avoid initiating the cycle of restoration, okay? And then preserve the tooth for as long as possible. How should we manage dental caries and carious lesions. First of all, we have to detect it. We have to know, do we have dental caries or not? So detecting early lesions and subsequently providing accurate diagnosis, and then we have to assess caries activity and caries risk. And then we have to, pour, to form a preventive program of a new carious lesions. We will go on this and it will get clearer to you as the lecture goes on. So my then prime focus should be on non-cavitated carious lesions. Now we have a biofilm. Can we remove the biofilm by tooth brushing? Yes, we can, it's simple. If you remove the biofilm, your four cycles will be deprived of one of them, which means dental caries will not be initiated because there are my, no microorganisms to ferment our carbohydrates and making it uh, acid. And or remineralization or by sealing over them. 
So we have either to remove biofilm or start a remineralization program or seal over the carious legion. Seal over the carious legions. Or we can make a combination of all. Remove the biofilm, start a remineralization program, and seal over them. How do we seal over them? Obviously, we have the first choice in occlusal surfaces. That is the fissure sealant for occlusal surfaces. Now we have another issue that is resin infiltration for smooth surfaces. And I have given you a reference here, Dore et al. in 2016. This is an article that explains the uh, technique of resin infiltration. Now, micro cavitation. Sometimes the stage at which a surface breach has taken place, but it is not considered to be frankly cavitated legion is called micro cavitation. The surface is still intact. However, there is a subsurface legion the care is a process is going on under the surface, subsurface legion. In this case, sealing over them and depriving the bacteria within the legion of further carbohydrates intake might arrest them. This is called breach of the surface, but not complete cavitation. Micro cavitation is the term for this. Restorative management of carious legions. So what's my aim when I want to manage the carious legion? Aid plaque control, removal of the biofilm, as we have just said. Protect the pulp dentine complex and arrest the legion by sealing over it. And then when, once we have controlled the plaque, protected the pulp dentine complex and arrested the lesion, we can then restore the function, form, and aesthetics of the tooth. If you want to further read about this, go for KID 2004. This will explain to you in detail what we mean by this. Now, should all caries be removed and why? A big question. Yeah, do we have to remove all dental caries? And if the answer is yes, why? If the answer is no, why? I would say, yes, we have to remove all dental caries to withstand packing of materials and retain the restoration, which applies only to dental amalgam. Now, wait a minute. We are talking about different techniques here. Categories, one is filling with amalgam, second is filling with composites. Now, when we talk about amalgam, yes, all caries has to be removed. Why? To withstand packing of materials and retain the restoration, okay? That is not possible for amalgam. You can't pack amalgam against soft dentine. However, when you use composites as a filling material, the answer is no. We don't have to remove all dental caries. Removal of dental heart tissues for this purpose cannot be justified. Cannot be justified. I repeat it. You have to dare and say it. You can leave dental caries when you have good seal, good seal, coronal seal. As composites do not require packing against hard surface like, like in amalgam. Now what's next? Tooth tissue removal, should we remove bacteria? Yeah, tooth tissue removal simply to remove bacteria is not logical. It's not justified. Yeah. Well, I say there is bacteria here. So let's cut all of this lovely dentine because there might be bacteria in it. 
that's not logical. That's not justified. Why? I am talking to you about evidence, evidence based on history. Evidence here says the number of viable long term remaining bacteria in a proximity to the pulp does not, repeat, does not seem to be increased in sealed legions. Now, you seal the legion, no further carbohydrates goes in it. Some bacteria is buried in, okay? There is evidence that in a proximity to the pulp, the bacteria does not see, seem to be increased. Now, how about clinical studies? Clinical studies have consequently not found detrimental effects to the pulp by sealing in bacteria. There is no detrimental effect to the pulp by sealing in bacteria, right? Let's see how we can handle this. Does carious dentine need to be removed prior to restoration placement? Now look, clinical follow-ups of bonded restorations placed over soft dentine provided evidence that once the cavity margins are laid in relatively sound tissue, adequate margin sealing is guaranteed. You have to have good seal, good seal, nothing, no fluids, no sugar, no carbohydrates should go in between your composite and the tooth tissue into the carious legion. If you achieve this good seal, no further progression of the carious legion can be arrested. Okay? The carious legion can be arrested. No further progression and the carious legion can be arrested. But since bonding to carious dentine is generally not as good as to the sound dentine, the answer to the question is yes, we should remove carious dentine from the periphery, from the walls, right? And that is only enough amount of caries removed to provide adequate bonding for the filling material. That is evidence-based dentistry. Now, should demineralized dentine be removed? The answer is no. Stupid. Why to remove demineralized dentine? It can be remineralized. It is good. There is no bacteria in it. Okay. Demineralized, but structurally intact dentine that can be remineralized should be preserved. Even demineralized dentine should be preserved. Shumana demineralized. فقدت بعض الأملح. الدنتين فقد بعض الأملح. Right? لكنه it's not very soft. It is not destroyed. Some of the mineral have been lost. Right? So we can leave it behind. Some studies have even reported remineralization of infected disorganized dentine. Okay? Can be remineralized. But these studies are not very convincing, okay? Some studies have even reported remineralization of infected disorganized dentine, okay? You can look at these studies if you like. It is like in Carola Maltz in 2013. This is the latest, okay. Next, all right. Now, can you compare for us affected and infected dentine? What do you mean by affected or infected dentine? In the beginning, I told you that there are problems about terms related to dental caries. Now, one of them is the affected and infected dentine. So what's infected dentine? Listen, it is the irreversibly demineralized and broken down collagen 
with bacterial invasion. Destroyed with bacterial invasion. Very soft, moist, rotib, and it is very easy to remove with a spoon excavator. While affected dentine, okay, is partially demineralized, contains minimal to no bacteria, relatively hard in comparison to the infected dentine. It's hard, it's not moist, it is dry, and not easy to remove with a spoon excavator. There you go. You see this white line, this white line separates the infected dentine above from the affected dentine here, lower to it. So inner affected dentine, few bacteria, remineralizable, يستطيع أن يستقبل المينرال بعض الأملاح وخصوصا إذا جاءت من الفلوريد vital, sensitive, and it is useful. While outer infected dentine, look at it here, it is with a lot of bacteria, soft, dead, de completely demineralized, without sensation, nothing, okay? And it is not useful. You see, these are the differences between them. All right, so here, what do we do then? How do we do the um, caries removal? Preserve non-demineralized and remineralizable tissue, achieve adequate seal, avoid discomfort, pain, and dental anxiety, as both significantly influence treatment care planning and outcomes, and maintain pulpal health by preserving residual dentine and maximize longevity of the restoration by removing enough soft dentine, enough soft dentine to place a durable restoration of sufficient bulk and resilience. So now my message again is seal for prevention, seal for prevention. All right. What to do to detect dental caries? Well, as we have been brought up, all of us learned that in order to diagnose dental caries or to detect dental caries, we have to have clean, dry tooth. We have to avoid repeated or forceful drying to prevent pulpal damage. Of course, you have to have magnifying loops or glasses, and you have to have good light illumination and use the explorer used for assessment of surface texture only. You don't insert it inside the lesion itself. You, if the tooth surface is still intact, it's not a cavity. When you move a sharp explorer on the top of it, you may break it and make it cavitated when it was not. So we have to be wise using the explorer. Care needed in deeper areas to avoid inadvert pulpal damage. Now, I will show you how to use the Explorer. Here is your thumb. If you press the Explorer, Dental Explorer, okay, your underneath the thumb, there will be blanch area. See the circle here? This is a blanch area. This is normal. This is, this push is enough for detection of dental caries on the, or change of texture on the tooth surface. It shouldn't be more than this, it shouldn't be more than this. So now, as we detect the carious lesion, there might be two types of cavities. One of them is deep, the other one is shallow. Now, what about, what's the deep? 
what is the shallow radiographically now a deep radiographically involves the inner palpal third or quarter of the dentine or with clinically assessed risk of pulp exposure تطلع على صورة الأشعة إذا واصل للإنر ثيرد of the dentine معناته it is considered to be deep if there is a possibility of pulp exposure it is considered to be deep listen deep classification into deep and shallow is important for the management because managing the deep is different from managing the shallow a shallow or moderately deep lesion is not reaching the inner third of the or quarter of the dentine. So in the deep, the priority is for preservation of the palpal health. While in the shallow, we are away from the pulp. There is a lot of dentine between the lesion and the pulp, okay? So our priority here is restoration longevity. Fine. Next, how to remove the dental caries? Use sharp spoon excavators, preferred method of caries detection when possible. Use round excavating bears on low speed hand pieces. Now, which bear? The largest la round bear that fits in the area of interest should be used to avoid unnecessarily tooth structure removal so round bears first spoon excavators they have to be sharp for good removal now large round bear that fits the legion all right so you have to have different sizes of round bears driven by a low speed hand piece then use them for the removal of dental caries Use of caries disclosing dyes. Yes, you can, but not every layer of the dentine that has absorbed the dye should be removed. Now, be, be careful about this. Tactly confirm the presence of caries before removal of dye stain. Yes, the stain shows you. Here is a demineralized dentine. Then bring your sharp spoon excavator and feel it tactly by tactile sensation. And you must consider dyes as visual identification aids for the novice, for the beginner, not diagnostic for remaining caries. All right? So it's not like a rule wherever there is a stain by the dye the dentine should be removed. That's very wrong. How much carious tissue should be removed and what options do we have? Now, okay, listen to this. Non-selective removal to hard dentine. This is number one way of removing dental caries. We remove all the caries till we get to the hard dentine. Is this good? It was formerly known as complete ex excavation or complete caries removal, okay? Now, only hard dentine is, low, is left in this process. That demineralized, free of bacteria is completely removed. This is considered an over treatment and no longer advocated. And I call it very destructive. Right? So forget about it. Non-selective removal to hard dentine is obsolete nowadays. We don't use it. Next, selective removal to firm dentine leaves leathery dentine pulpally. هذه وامتى بدنا نستعمل هاي الطريقة؟ بنشيل كل الكاريز لحد ما نوصل لعند firm dentine, leathery dentine. There is a feeling of resistance to hand excavator while the cavity margins Hell, the cavity margins, but they are very hard. Why? Because we want to bond to them to make a good seal. We are talking about the floor. When we get to leathery dentine, 
Okay, we stop. All right. Selective removal to firm dentine is the treatment of choice for both dentition. Emma, el primary or el permanent. In shallow or moderate deep cavitated dentinal lesions, i.e. lesions radiographically extending less than the pulpal third or quarter of dentine. Now, what's next? Selective removal to soft dentine. Now, we have a situation in which there is a lot of soft caries, but if we remove this caries, we might endanger the pulp, jeopardize the vitality of the pulp or make pulp exposure by either insults or by the products being pushed into the pulp, products of the carious process. Now, the tariqa is recommended in deep cavitated lesions, i.e. extending to the pulpal third or quarter of the dentine, very close to the pulp. We remove most of the caries, right? And if we now remove further what we expect, pulp exposure, we stop and we seal. Soft carious tissue is left over the pulp to avoid exposure or stress to the pulp, thereby promoting pulpal health while peripheral enamel, walls, peripheral enamel and dentine are prepared to hide, to hard. Why? because we want to seal to them. We want to bond our composite to them so that nothing goes inside the legion, the carious cavity. Selective removal to soft dentine reduces the risk of pulpal exposure significantly, significantly. This means we are going to preserve more vital teeth, okay? by avoiding pulp exposure as compared with non-selective. The first one I explained to you, non-selective removal to hard or selective removal to firm dentine. Now, number four is carry, stepwise caries removal. Is a carious tissue removal? Okay. Soft carious tissue is left over the pulp in the first step. BG and then and soft caries. نعمل له زيارتين الزيارة الأولى بنشيل معظم التسوس وبنحط فيه عندي good filling like Fuji 9 glass ionomer filling we send him home for 6 months, 8 months, a year okay, when he comes back to us, we remove the temp or the provisional restoration and we assess again the amount of caries. Can we remove more? Yes, we can. We remove as much as we can. And then after the second re-entry into the legion, okay, we provide the permanent restoration. A provisional restoration is a place which should be sufficiently durable to 12 months to allow changes in the dentine and pulp to take a place. Also because patients may not retain to complete the treatment. يعني واحد بده يسافر على الولايات المتحدة مش راح يرجع لك انت الان بتقول لو اني اشيل كل التسوس بدي اعمل بلب اكسبوجر شو بعمل؟ بشيل معظم التسوس اللي موجود وبحط له حشوة انا لونج تيرم اوكي بروفيجنال مثلا بجلاس اينوم جود سيل ات ويل بي ات ويل اتشيف ا جود سيل بعدين هو طريقته لما يروح على البلد اللي بده رايح عليها بكمل المعالجة تبعته ناو What's the rationale? Why do we do stepwise? The reason for stepwise removal is the expectation that in the first step, tertiary dentine is formed, demineralized dentine becomes remineralized, and the amount of viable bacteria is reduced. You re-enter again. The restoration is removed, and there is an opportunity to reevaluate changes. Now, you must assess the color. It will become harder. It will be drier. Okay, gonna the count most dry, and then carious tissue removal is continued 
until leather dentine remains over the pulp, and then we put our permanent restoration. This is called stepwise caries excavation. Now, there you go. Now I'm talking about the deep legion, okay? Other uh, deep legion, horn, shallow cavity, or both carious legion, short tool, and know the pulp is vital. If it is non-vital, ah, that's another story. You would opt to go for RCT. Okay, now, if the cavity is shallow, not reaching the inner third, okay, no risk of pulp exposure, we have to do selective removal to firm dentine, okay, put our uh, filling, we do non-restorable cavity control, and then we can fissure seal the rest of the fissures. Now, deep cavity, again, selective removal to soft dentine or stepwise caries extubation. What is ART? A traumatic restorative treatment, sealing with GIC, sealing with GIC. Caries management and strategy, then, so our strategy, when we are faced with uh, the, the uh, carious legions, we have to think about, first of all, how do I prevent these carious legions and heal them rather than drill them, right? So can we remineralize them? If the answer is yes, please do preventive program, okay? Heal rather than repair, okay? Minimal invasive treatment of legions, Hala. Number two, repair rather than replace. Every time you replace a restoration, you are going to increase the size of the cavity. Okay. Okay. And then restorations are of last resort and do not make patients care is free. يعني انت جيت وقلت خلاص يلا حشيت لك مع السلامه لا ما المريض بعد الفاكتورز بعد المريض عنده ريسك اسسمنت عاليه بعد الفاكتورز ذات ار ريسبونسبل فور دنتال كيريز موجوده اول يو هاف دان كان في عندك كافيتي حطيت فيها كومبوزيت ذاتس نوت جود انف ذاتس نوت جود استراتيجي اوكي ناو اي ونت تو جو ثرو some methods of caries excavation, conventional ex excavation with burrs. The best is carbon steel or tungsten carbide burrs, okay? And next to it is polymeric burrs, okay? But they leave behind some residual caries. If you are interested in removing all of the caries, they don't remove all of it. P and then a normal burrs is more ceramic burrs, okay? These are the polymeric burrs, okay? Now, uh, you can use chemi, uh, chemo mechanical excavations. They are sodium hypochlorate based agents. They are solutions or gels containing water. A mixture of amino acid and sodium hypochlorite is inserted, and then the caries is removed. Okay. Uh, pepsin based caries excavation. This is a, a chemo mechanical excavation. You can use sono abrasion. It's based on the use of cutting tips coupled to high frequency sonic air scalar hand pieces. Still uh, taking more uh, time than the carbide bear. Okay. Um, excavation by air abrasion. The procedure uses the kinetic energy of abrasive particles. Air abrasion systems, uh, they have a major drawback that is sound dentine is more efficiently removed rather than the carious dentine. So we remove good structure, dentine structure, but we don't remove the soft caries. They're not very good. Uh, then uh, they have tried removing caries by lasers. Okay. Uh, the word laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. في داخل التوث بيكون في شوية مي هذول المي will will take some of the beam of the laser they will boil and they will be incident radiation causing sudden heating of the water inside the tooth as a result high steam pressure is formed and inducing a violent uh, expansion and ejection of dental hard tissues. 
Now, excavation aided by laser-induced fluorescence, okay? And we have fluorescence-aided caries excavation. All right. Now, uh, in the next few two minutes, if the moderator allows me, I will ask this question. Do we still need a cavity design as advocated by GV Black? Principles of cavity preparation. This gentleman, G.V. Black, uh, in, in the last two centuries, said that the professional man has no right to be other than continuous student. I consider myself a continuous student of restorative dentistry. I have been all the time reading lots and lots of books and uh, literature and um, I always discover that my knowledge, uh, there is a gap here and there, and I want to fill that gap. So um, uh, I agree that the professional man should be a continuous student. Now, the complete divorcement, now G.V. Black said also that the complete divorcement of dental practice from studies of pathology of dental caries that existed in the past is an anomaly in science that should not continue. لازم نضلنا نتعلم. ما بصير. بدك تتعلم pathology, بدك تتعلم dental caries, بدك تتعلم dental materials, بدك تتعلم كل هذول اللي related to the um, to the field of your speciality like بالمعالجة التحفظية. هلا restorative dentistry, you have to learn all about this. Right? Otherwise, you will be okay, plainly plainly like a mechanic, not a thinking dentist, right? So we have actually يجب أن يتزاوج العلم مع المهارة السريرية كي تجعل من طبيب من طبيب الأسنان أو من الأخصائي عالما مفكرا وطبيبا ماهرا. Now, do we still need cavity design? Simply, for amalgam, yes, we need cavity design. For composite, the answer is no, because it's a different story. Bonding, okay, has downgraded the rules of cavity preparation to simply and solely removing caries, okay? The geometric shape of cavity design that was laid down by GV Black is not required for bonding systems. So we had to remember that uh, manage dental caries as a disease. The detection of dental caries is not a treatment plan. The detection of a carious by itself must not automatically lead to a decision to restore it. مش بس تشوف في عندي هنا تغيير في لون السن بقول هذا تسوس يلا جيب الهاند بيس وافتحه وعبي مكانه إلى آخره. No, الآن بال بالبوندنج تغير كل شيء ولازم احنا نفكر بطريقه شموليه اكثر في ونوجد حلول لمرضانا بطريقه افضل. الاستراتيجي بريزيرف دنتال تيشوز اتشيف اند مينتين دنتال هيلث فولو ذا برنسبلز اوف مينيمالي انفيزيف دنتال تكنيكس يعني بمعنى اخر اذا استطعت ان ترقع الحشوه فلا تزيلها. اوكي؟ لا تزيلها. Restore to form and function with the highest quality of aesthetic outcome. Engaged patients. Most important is that your patient has to understand that without his cooperation, six months later, he will come back with a number of new carious lesions if he does not abide with your preventive program that you have formulated for him. Okay, so. Now, my last message is no extension for a prevention. Remember, we used to say extension for a prevention. No, that is in red. Okay, in a blue, preserve and seal for prevention. With this, I thank you all very much for your um, listening to my lecture, and I, ha I hope you have enjoyed it. Dr. Anton Khouri, the mic is yours. Thank you, Dr. Zakaria al Muhatar al Qaymi. Muhatarat, he is a new, 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 a
وزي ما حكيت حضرتك انه it is art based on science احنا اطباء مش restorative dentist احنا عندنا واجب ان نثقف مرضانا ونعلمه انه الحشوه هي مش علاج للتسوس واهم شيء انه نحافظ على السيل والسيل the perfect seal is the our goal not good seal perfect seal and this is managed as everybody knows on a level only on the team we have some questions uh, Dr. Zakaria I think we have a question uh, by Dr. Sousan she said what is the maximum thickness of soft dentine that can be left under a sealed composite restoration is the first question yeah. you want me and to answer yes please yes بالواقع هي الدكتورة سوسن لازم تنظر للموضوع بطريقة مختلفة وهي إنه قديش أنا لازم أشيل من الصف دنتين to provide good seal now what is the minimum thickness of composite that is going to be sustainable and provide a good seal I would say anything above two millimeters will make a good seal so the periphery the lateral walls of our cavity, right, is the important. So I remove much of the soft dentine to enough accommodate and provide good seal of composite. This is the way I look at it. Yes. No. We have another question from Anonymous. Teddy, can I add new amalgam to old amalgam restoration. Add new amalgam to uh, without removal no. without removal of the old restoration. Yes, uh, I have used this. Uh, that has nothing to do with today's lecture, but I can answer this. Now you have to have undercuts and consider the old amalgam like a tooth. Uh, structure make undercuts in amalgam and the tooth and put a new amalgam put in your you can do this i have done it but uh, you hope that corrosive material will uh, close the gap between the new amalgam and the old amalgam that's good thank you uh, also we have another question from dr asma how do how to differentiate between affected and infected dentine nickel? Yes, but very easy. Very easy. Affected dentine, infected, infected. As I said, our issue rubb. it is soft. it is it might be even smelly, and it can be removed easily by a sharp spoon excavator. Now, when you remove all of this and you get to the affected, you would feel resistance, okay? You would not feel it um, like rotted, moist. It will get drier and it will become, I wouldn't say rigid, but it might be feeling leathery, leathery. Yes. Uh, another question from Dr. Ahmed Asad. Please tell us about amalgam composite bonding ability. Amalgam composite? Yes, if we can add composite to amalgam. Can we bond uh, composite to amalgam? Yes, uh, I'm not advocate of bonded amalgam. Um, they have advocated it, uh, but uh, clinical trials did not, uh, did not give good results. So. Uh, if you can't bond amalgam to the tooth tissue, how can you bond amalgam to a composite? But uh, I don't think I would fancy this. I'm not advocate of this. I don't know about you. You may, you may answer this. <laughs> well, 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 thank you for asking. But uh, I can add uh, small... Uh, uh, here, if the amalgam restoration is very big and the removal of it will destroy the old filling, 
I might do undercut on the amalgam on some place and bond to the dental remaining tissue, some composite that will keep it for a longer time until we have more decision. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, in this case, you need to review your, uh, your patient uh, more frequently. I would say every three months, yes. Yes, I, I yeah. Saw. yeah. I think till now we have uh, completed all the questions. And if you want to add anything for the audience. I, 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 I would like to say the following. I am uh, like you, I am a volunteer. I am a continuous student. Uh, I keep uh, learning all the time. I read a lot and still I am hungry for more. Now, please, I want to appeal to all of you that uh, uh, volunteer and uh, come up with ideas about future lectures, okay, to participate for the sake of our profession, for the sake of our speciality, we want. ليش أنا بحكي بال إنجليزي؟ ليش ما أحكي بالعربي؟ بدنا إحنا الجمعية تنشط وتأدي واجباتها يا إخوان، ولذلك أنا أتمنى من الجميع إنه please تفضلوا أعطونا جهد من عندكو وبدنا دعمكو، بدنا محاضرات، بدنا مشاركات. أشكرك دكتور أنطون. شكرا لك انا بايد اللي بحكي دكتور زكريا لانه العلم عمره ما بوقف وهو متغير بس الثوابت تبعه ثابته والبيزكس ثابته مهما حاولوا الشركات وبعض العلماء الجدد انه يعطون افكار جديده بس لازم تكون دائما اون بيزك ساينس بيزد ذير وبدي اكرر كمان شغله إنه الأسئلة اللي راح تنحط للتعليم المستمر راح تظهر مجرد ما أي أتندي طلع من ال خرج من الزوم في عندنا سؤالين بعرفش أقرأهم بس كمان جداد نعم ما عندك مانع قبل ما نطلع I think you answered that can I add composite to old composite Yes, of course. Yes, there is no. Aslan, now we encourage this. The repair, this one. Yes. Oh, Kaman. So, how can we use air abrasion in caries removal in good way since it is removal? It removes all dentine affected and affected. Yeah. Actually, actually, I don't recommend it because I have said it removes the hard dentine more than the soft dentine. Right, but what I have given you is eight ways of removing dental caries. This does not mean I have recommended them for you. Anna, I would say the best is a sharp spoon excavator coupled with um, a good size or appropriate size, I should say, of round bear tungsten carbide round bear on a slow speed is good. Yes, uh, and the last question, and we will finish. Do we yeah. need radiograph and stepwise technique after a year of recall? Uh, it goes without saying. the treatment plan, okay, when you want to do your treatment plan, you have to have radiographs. You, you put them as baseline, and then you compare in the future after uh, six months review, what, what's what's happening or one year review what's happening now you have to have yes yes mm. right i think uh, we will go to the end of our nice lecture and our uh, tremendous <laughs> uh, good lecturer and professor and he is uh, now 